Hey everyone, hey and welcome back to yet another episode of Battle Rap Resume. This is your host, Tom Quee. We are here for one of my favourite things that we do on the show. We're doing an event preview, this preview being of KOTR's inaugural event in uh, in January of 2017, that being their Cheese on Toes event. Mad card this is, really, really excited to get into this. Beforehand, please make sure to subscribe to the show uh, on, on your on your podcast feed, on your YouTube channel. Please get in contact with me as well, resume at gmail.com. And if you want to hear where those emails are read out, go on to Pat patreon.com forward slash power up resume and if you donate a little bit of money put some money towards the show you get access to tons and tons of exclusive content including resume review where i um go back through battle up resume month by month talk about my favorite battles as well that came out in all the leagues and read the emails out you can also help support the show by leaving us a review on itunes that'll be greatly appreciated too so um yeah we'll get into the uh the preview today and this was very much a kind of uh last minute effort in a sense because um you know i just got an email from uh, my guest today uh Che Creo today and um you just hit me up and you just wanted to wanted to you know preview the KOTR event right yeah that's correct man I mean just kind of like a spur of the moment thing you know um I'm a big fan of the show I mean like I download the uh uh sessions of uh Stitcher and stuff so Cheers, yeah I mean um yeah like I just wanted to you know I've kind of wanted to get into kind of reviewing more battle rap stuff because mm. uh, I do um write-ups currently for an online magazine called RAF mm. and um yeah I mean like I've been watching battle rap for ages so you know it just kind of went hand in hand and I just figured I'd just give you a shout yeah, yeah so. well it's more than more than watching it and writing about it I mean you mentioned in a little exchange earlier that you know the, the 2006 WRCs was something that was on your radar to perform in is that right <laughs> yeah yeah well back going in the back day now, yeah. yeah i know tell me about it yeah so um how that kind of came about was um i was going by a different kind of name then so mm-hmm. i was rapping mm-hmm. under the name uh gray k Right. And um, what happened was I, I was watching basically, you know, like the old school jump offs. So oh, yeah. uh, the um, street battles, that's it. You know, with yeah. uh, Scars. Right. With, OK. Not, not Scars. Right. OK. Um, he's quite actually well known now. Mm-hmm. He's um, uh, A&R for Island Records. Oh, Goes shit. by the name of um, Ben Scars. So okay. uh, basically Scars was the host. And you had a lot of people who quite, well, probably considered like vets now, like, you know, like Archaic. Mm-hmm. And um, I think he's probably the most well, consistent out of all the people which were doing kind of like freestyle battle rap at the time. We were still about today. But I think like Respect BA was on there. Yeah, yeah, Stig yeah. of the Dump was on there as well. Coolers. Uh, K- Coolers, yeah. yeah. Coolers was on there. So, um, yeah, I started watching that. And then um, basically they had advertisements for the uh, tryouts for 2006. Mm. So, um, yeah, I just thought, you know, at the time, like it was just a bit of a battle rap enthusiast but you know i was also kind of into like boom bap as well so and also getting into like cypher sessions and going to um an event which they used to do um kind of like around south london called uh end of a week i don't know if you're familiar with that right um i think kruger might have mentioned that actually that he went there yeah where where where, where was that based what was it, was it a shop was it or uh, no, it was a show. So oh, right, basically, right. it was kind of like in. Have you ever been to a jump off event before? I, I haven't actually. It's definitely something I need okay. to do. Yeah. Yeah, I don't know if they actually do the jump off events anymore. I mean, I went there a couple of years ago with my girlfriend, and uh, she didn't like it too much, especially the booty shaking. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what is that? <laughs> <laughs> um, my man is uh, is uh, skeptical for you know the male eyes like yeah so I mean the format was kind of like in you know, a battle style so you have like you know they'll pick girls out of the audience and you know obviously the ones with the kind of large derriers as they say and um, yeah they just kind of go back and forth and they're like grinding on a on a male kind of like participant from the audience and you know whoever shook their ass the best sure. 100 pounds <laughs> so, yeah you know it was um yeah it was quite interesting and, to say the least and um you know 2007 you were supposed to team up with coolers is that right or yeah so i mean basically what what happened was so i tried out for the 2006 uh, on two occasions so the first time um we it was basically me and just a friend uh we battled um a guy called do you remember uh, maybe you don't you might not be aware it's a guy called lnc he does a lot of the yeah, jump off battles bat- as well he battled kruger in a very early don't flop battle actually 
Yeah, that's correct. Yeah, I think he's done one or two don't flop battles. He's, I think his freestyle game is a lot better than his ring game. But um, at the time, like you know, he was he was on pretty good form. So we uh, we got floored. <laughs> I'm not gonna lie. Um, it was him and another guy. I can't remember the dude's name. But um, yeah, so we got floored. But I basically kept in contact with a lot of the jump off staff, and um, I had like Scar's number for a while, and. Um, then another set of tryouts came out and uh, Scars was like, oh, I need a, uh, you know, like a partner for this guy called Nico the Negro. Oh my God. I, yeah. It, the most disliked video on Don't Flop's YouTube yeah. is his battle <laughs> versus Killer Instinct. It's awful. Oh, it, it gets worse, Tom. <laughs> it gets oh, worse. <laughs> so basically, um, how that came about was, um, so I agreed to do it. I was, I think it was, this was just before I went to university, actually. So at the time, like I had a lot of free time on my hands. So I was kind of getting into writing, kind of like poetry, things like that, and, and rap. And um, I wanted to try the battle thing. So I was just like, yeah, cool, why not? And um, we ended up battling uh, Spit Semis and TA. Mm-hmm. Um, I think the boat well Spit Semis was on both 06 and 07 yeah. and um, yeah it was outside of uh, uh, Wimbledon so like I think this was when the tennis was going on so there was a lot of freestyles about like um, like uh, you know Henman and you know like right. um, you're getting served well, over the net like, yeah, yeah. oh yeah stuff yeah. like that yeah oh what was oh Nico had a terrible line as well he was just like yeah and this battle will be Wimbled done wow. <laughs> I was just like that's so <laughs> I don't know like um, if it's gonna work out but um, yeah I mean uh, so through that I met like Coolers and um, you know like uh, kind of like collabed on a couple of things with him so uh, I produced a couple of beats as well because I'm a producer so uh, I sent him a couple of beats for a mixtape I think he used one mm-hmm. and um, my friend as well was going to do a storyboard for one of his videos and also yeah the, the 2007 WRCs we were actually like kind of this was in the time of like MSN and stuff mm-hmm. so what we was doing was doing a live chat thing you know like going into like msn groups and then like two on twos battling you know like other people (laughs) and um funny enough we actually had like a uh you know like a two on two practice battle online with like ark and er nice um yeah so that was quite interesting Uh, from what i remember i think like archaic called me like I look like police chief Wiggum or in a police victim or (laughs) something along those lines. So it was funny. It was all all in good jest. And um, I think also I was chatting to a couple of other people on there and I think I came across Sensor as well. Mm. And I think at the time Sensor was planning to enter the 07 WRCs and uh, I was trying to convince them I was like yeah yeah I'm up for it and you know we was trying to arrange a couple things but it kind of fell through so I think from then on I just kind of you know kind of gave up on becoming the whole battle rapper and just kind of appreciating it from a fan perspective <laughs> and, and you never thought dipping a toe in don't flop or anything at that time or um no well funny enough I mean after that I went on to university and then um I think Don't Flop kind of cropped around 08, 09. Yeah. So I was kind of watching here and there. Mm. I was never really like majorly into the written format at first. I was always, because I've kind of like, more, I was kind of more familiar with the freestyle era and that's sure. something which I kind of appreciated and I appreciated the craft of it. And um, but yeah, I think my interest kind of spiked more around 011, 012 when you had like... Um, you know, like the lunacies and uh, sure. like the matters, and you it's know, like all that kind of era like, of the British scene. Definitely that, that those years. Yeah, and um, who's that other guy? And Tenchu as well. Yeah. Those kind of dudes. So yeah, mm-hmm. interesting man. I mean, great that you were sort of on the fringes there, and to give us that sort of insight is uh, very intriguing. Like you know, those sort of uh, those MSN battles are lost to time. But uh, if there was some sort of record of like you know, Er uh, uh, and Art uh, just going at these randomers, I'd love to see that. But we'll uh, you know, at least at least we have these recollections. So we'll push on to the this card, this cheese on toes card, which is I mean, KOTR have just gone from strength to strength really, and this card is fantastic. Like you know, there are some really really good battles on it. Um, I just want to say if. 
you're listening, you know, prior, this is on Sunday, the 22nd of January, uh, you know, a new cross in, so definitely make your way down if you're thinking about it because the card is exceptional and um first battle we have is hulk versus jeffers which is definitely an interesting clash hulk who i've had on the show unfortunately my internet cut out and we had to like stop the interview and that was before christmas so hulk i am going to get you back on the show it was a really good interview up to that point so we're going to sort of eclipse it out jeffers um who i most remember from the blunt ted clash has some good stuff actually a slightly more elderly gentleman more experienced but you know this this should be a fun one i don't know if this is the running order it kind of makes sense as such but i I mean, um, we, you know, we spoke earlier just beforehand, um, Shay, you said you weren't too familiar with Jeffers, but Hulk is a battler. Your opinions on that? Oh, man, I think Hulk is definitely very overrated. And right. I think, like, <laughs> his rep- reputation precedes him somewhat because whenever you kind of see him on camera, like, there's this perception that he's like a lazy writer or he doesn't kind of, like, prep a lot or like you know he doesn't it doesn't come across as if he's taking it seriously but from the battles i've seen him do live so i've seen i went to the i can't remember the first kotr name of the event right but i remember pedro and bard were head- headlining it oh okay yeah that was the, the infamous it. punch yeah, yeah yeah i was there i actually got oh, it on shit. camera as well so oh, it's quite funny <laughs> um and uh yeah i i think he battled mckenzie Mm-hmm. and um yeah he had some really good lines like really really dope lines i mean in comparison to you know mckenzie kind of you know floored him yeah. but you know he, he was consistent and also i went to the uh gift of the gab um kotr event oh, way about, about, I, I kid, yeah. I, yeah and wow oh, man he was going in mm-hmm. some of the lines are just phenomenal and I've, he had a line about um there was a, a judge there called Tanaka Tan, I think. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. I think that's the name, yeah. I mean, he says something like, I always keep touching the ends like Tanaka Tan's hair or something like that. And the crowd just went absolutely mad for it. And I was just in hysterics. But um, yeah, he's a very, you know, when he's on his A game, he's a very intricate writer, I reckon. Mm. You know, and uh, can kind of get under the skin of. Uh, the skin of an opponent so yeah i think i don't know too much about this jeffers guy but um no yeah I, maybe you can fill in the blanks in terms yeah, of that. yeah i'm afraid jeffers again is someone that i sort of know i had blunt head on the show recently um i don't know if that episode will be out by the time we, we launch this but this, that's that was a great episode a uh, very very controversial episode i think people are gonna gonna yeah. enjoy that one and he battled jeffers i think blunt ted like walked out on the battle because something was said i'm not quite sure what the situation was so all i know is jeffers from <laughs> that but i know that jeffers is quite a treasured kotr sort of guy of the coterie and um yeah hulk as well hulk just needs to sort of try harder i suppose you know he does have some fantastic battles no doubt he has that authority and presence in the ring that i really enjoy mm. awesome lines as well i would highly recommend people to check out him versus cystic that's a slept on don't flop battle i don't think it's got many views but both of them really bring it in that battle and cystic's another one that i'm kind of like oh cystic whatever but he writes in that battle he writes really really well but yeah hulk jeffers is, is an interesting one and um we, we push on uh, to the next battle this is a, a really good clash i think lex versus Colton Shanks. Now Lex is, um, you know, had a had a really great trajectory. He tried out actually the same Don't Flop event that I tried out at, and um, you know he didn't. He sort of did okay. You know, it wasn't necessarily that interesting. I think. Oh, who did he battle? He battled a guy called Jay. That was right, and it was kind of not bad in himself. But then he really stepped up his game. Uh, the Ambi battle, especially. I don't know if you've checked that out. Absolutely fantastic. Wears his heart on his sleeve. Talks of um, climbing to the top of a car park and shouting his bars over the walls to a prison yard and stuff like that. Apparently true. It's that kind of. Great pretty real shit and colton shanks um big fan of colton as well like he's kind of coming up the ranks he seems to be this is a really good opportunity for him i think as lex is quite an established name he just battled hulk as well lex so they got a bit more prestige behind him i mean colton uh, are you aware of this guy shay yeah i've seen a, a couple of his battles actually i yeah. saw the one he did in the park and then the mac sherry battle yeah so um yeah I've, i i agree with you i think um I like the one kind of aspect of his performance I like is his delivery mm. and he's got like a good cadence as well and he carries himself quite well I think his pen game could be addressed here and there I think some of the lines are a bit kind of questionable but um, aside from that I think that you know as long as he kind of you know gets more opponents kind of gets more familiar with the kind of um, <clears throat> 
the kind of template of, of, you know, how to, to write and things like that. I think he could be, you know, on his way to a good, you know, like 2017. Mm. So mm. No, definitely. I think I remember seeing that battle against Maisie in the park that you have to mention. I was there live and I was very impressed by the way that Colton delivered a punch. He clearly understands battle rap very, very well. He knows how to sort of be a little bit tongue in cheek with his stuff, but still have that kind of quite explosive wordplay. Lex is, Lex is fantastic. Like, you know, Lex, I think he had his kind of issues with Don't Flop. He then went over to Poetic Warfare and that league sort of shut down, unfortunately, despite his good performances on it. And I think KOTR is somewhere that he can really grow, you know, somewhere feckin' that he can really bloom. And um, this is going to be a great one, I think. I think they're going to bring the best out of each other. And I think Lex now is a bit more established in KOTR. This isn't like his debut against Hulk. He's kind of there. Colton's very much a fan favourite. I'm, I'm very, very much looking forward to this one. I think, you know... It's both theirs to take, you know what I mean? They're both kind of on the upcoming rise, and um, I think I think they'll go at each other well. Lex definitely has that more attuned aggression. Carlton's a little bit more wry. But, but you know, it's a decent one. And um, Shay, always good. You know, we're talking about the third battle now, Bowski versus Flabs. Always good to see Bowski battle, right? Oh, yeah, that guy is funny <laughs> as hell, man, yeah. honestly. The, I've, I've seen him a couple of times, so yeah, bounce, bounce, baby. <laughs> yeah, and um, yeah, off the record as well, you know, I've, I've spoken to him a couple of times right. in person, you know, and uh, really, really nice guy, really humble. Mm. Um, it's a shame he kind of fell out with Don't Flop. I don't know what yeah. his kind of like problem was, but, um, you know, like... I think he's somebody who definitely deserves like the main stage. Like he can entertain a crowd. Mm. He's got like good, you know, like punchlines, good delivery overall, just like a really good performer. So, you know, I mean, not to kind of take away anything from KOTR and, you know, no, to discredit no. them for the presence, you know, for the kind of exposure that he's getting through that channel. But, you know, I think, you know, he deserves a, a lot more, you know, essentially, I think, but mm. um, yeah, I think he's, you know, in terms of this battle i think he's definitely gonna be going in for the win um, yeah yeah i mean i mean don't get it twisted like bowski's a vet like you mm. know he's been around for so long he's battled so many big names you know recently went over as part of the no coast thing about o'shea for god's sake and maybe beat yeah. o'shea like you know it was a really really good battle that was the same event i believe bloodstro luna tryout so you know a long time ago um I, he's he's staff as well bowski as similar with hulk so it's good to see them putting on you know this is a strong card for flabs i believe flabs is the go big tv guy i believe yeah mm. i mean um yeah, because I, I saw the battle with LJ and he had the hoodie on with the yeah. Go Big TV sign. So I kind of, Randy. you know, yeah, it's, it's quite, you know, hand in hand, I'm assuming. So, yeah, yeah I mean, um, that's the only battle I've seen from him. Um, I think he did take advantage of the whole LJ choke. So obviously when you have a, an opponent who's kind of, you know, on their F game, <laughs> as per se, <laughs> you know, like... Um, you're going to go for the jugular, aren't you, really? You know, and uh, even if your material comes across as, you know, like very average, it's it's going to win hands down. So I, I definitely think that he's going to have to step his game up going up against a, a veteran uh, such as Bowski, mm. pretty much. Mm. Yeah, and uh, Flabs, I should say, uh, and by proxy, uh, Go Big TV, definitely everyone go subscribe, check out that channel. They have a lot of awesome interviews with battlers. I think they just uploaded one with Mickey that I need to check out. I've heard some good stuff. They had Tony on recently. I think they did like a cipher at the um, UKBL thing. And yeah, Flabs is a battler. Um, I did watch the LJ battle and I'm trying, I can't really remember too much. I remember liking him. It's not like he was forgettable or whatever. I just can't really recall anything too distinct. And, um, you know, you've always got your work out with, with you facing someone like Bowski because he can just say like, oh, your mum smells of poo and it, it, will, it will level the room. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like you can't, you can't prep yeah. for that. Yeah, he's um, he's very unpredictable, but yeah. in a you know in a very kind of tongue in cheek, sarcastic kind of way. So you know, and even I saw him perform at Gift of the Gab, and it's funny because obviously the styles contrast quite a lot. You know, you got one kind of like rapper who's like, yeah, you know, like I put the gun to your face and da 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 da, and he's just there like, yeah, and your mom's like this, and you just smell <laughs> like you're saying you smell of poo and yeah, like yeah. you know, and your your hairline shit or whatever. And, you know, um, when it comes to the whole kind of bars versus jokes kind of saying, I definitely feel that jokes definitely win in this scenario, especially if you're going up against someone like Barcy, because when it comes to, you know, doing that punchline jokey kind of format, um, he, he's going to win nine times out of ten. Mm, mm. 
and you know, push on to the next match here. And I've always felt, Shay, like you know, you can you can really judge a league on uh, for its quality on its title matches. You you look and see who is competing for the title on that certain league. You know, you look at King of the Dark, Don't Flop, No Coast, whatever, and you can sort of see the quality echoing through the trickle down and having a match. Like Mackenzie versus Canel. It's just, that is a fucking, cr- like, crazy match. Like, you know, these are two absolutely exceptional performers and writers. Like, diametric opposites as well. One is like this, you know, Welsh witty one liner absurdist kind of acid washout kind of, you know, savant. And then you have Mackenzie, this kind of furious, politically charged, you know, beautiful, intense writing. Scott, like, you know, I can't wait for this one. Yeah, no, most definitely. I mean, I've seen one or two canal battles and um, like you're saying, he, he does have that kind of, um, that style which you kind of mentioned. He kind of reminds me of like a, a backup singer for like Happy Mondays or something <laughs> like that, you know? Yeah, he, he has some <laughs> so traces kind of, of like, Bez about him, yeah. Yeah, yeah Bez, yeah. That's the, I think it was like, yeah, I was going to say Baz or Bez, something Bez. along those lines. But um, yeah, I, I mean, in terms of Mackenzie, I think uh, that guy is a phenomenal writer, yeah. man. And like, and I, I give credit where credit's due. I just think like this, you know, the last couple of battles he's had, he's just like floored his opponents completely. Like he took out Bard. The Cloudy Soprano battle was, oh, that was mm. amazing, especially the third round where he kind of breaks down, you know, like Moorish history and, yeah. you know, goes into, you know, uh, the bloodline of like Celts and things like that. It's just really, really dope. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'll, I'll put cloud in the sky like a bad bar or whatever he says like mm. that. Yeah, yeah. But no, no, I agree. He's kind of mythic, the way he kind of addresses paradigms and like they are, they really do kind of, you know, play testament to the quality of the league. I've had both of them. I've had their own battle rap resume episodes as well, which is a great honor, you know, to see these guys going against each other. But, you know, it's more, they're very, I don't think they've gone against opponents like each other before. Like, you know, because obviously for Canel, Mackenzie's ultra serious. He can clown, you know, he's definitely a very funny guy. Mackenzie Canel is just kind of this, you know, salubrious force. How do you get your hands on him? You know, because very slippery and kind of knock you out with one line. I'm just really excited to see how they adapt to each other. Yeah, most definitely. I was kind of thinking about this as well. I was thinking, you know, like a great way to kind of describe this or, you know, like a, a good kind of analogy would be like, because um, I always kind of equate like battle rap to wrestling. Right. Now... Like when I see Mackenzie versus Canel, I kind of think of like, you know, Mackenzie's kind of um, in that kind of spotlight as a champion. So he's kind of like the rock and, you know, the attitude there and Mm -hmm. kind of going through, you know, like certain guys, you know, like on Monday Night Raw, where it's just like, you know, it's just like a warm up match or something like that. So I think, you know, at the moment he's enjoying the fact that he's champion and he's kind of taking on opponents who... I'm not, you know, not to discredit Canal in any sort of way, but, you know, who aren't really on the same kind of like lyrical or, you know, like written kind of uh, a level as him. And um, I, I kind of feel like he's he's kind of getting more put over by KOTR by taking on someone like Canal. It's kind of like making him look a little bit better, I think, as, a, as an MC, mm. I think. Mm. Yeah, it's um, crazy. You know, absolutely brilliant. And I think the great thing about KOTR as well is no matter who wins this, you know, I mean, no one, no one like begrudging Mackenzie. I think with Bard, there was a sense that, oh, this is Mackenzie's to win sort of thing. Whereas I think here, if Canel would win, people would be really happy if Mackenzie retains it, retains it similarly. There's so many, you know, sorry, go ahead. Mm. Oh, no, no, I was just going to say, I mean, um, the Bard thing, yeah. I, I, when I went to that event where he had the altercation with Pedro, there was a sense of, like tension, you know, from, from other battlers and other people in attendance, you know, mm-hmm. um, when he was performing and whatnot. And I, you know, I think it's, maybe it's just, you know, it's kind of persona, maybe the whole kind of like pagan esque kind of rap doesn't kind of resonate with a lot of people, you know? Um, so I, I don't know, but, um, like Mackenzie, you know, not only has he got performance, you know, delivery bars, but he's like quite likable as a, yeah. you know, as a owner as well. So I think that's always going to kind of come into play and always going to kind of help you, um, in terms of battling. 
yeah yeah yeah, no i i I, yeah again i will say this again i'll echo what i've said before this is just you know this really says what kotr is about having mckenzie versus canal as a title match and it's it's you know it's a great great thing so push on you know it's not even the fucking top of the card like you know maybe it will be in the the sense of the ordering but still i hope not actually i hope maybe they do this as third matches people aren't too fucked like you know they kind of keep it more (laughs) in these last two battles are more of a fun battle big j versus templar surfer kid shay what are your thoughts on this um, I think Big J has had a bit of like a, an up and down kind of yeah. um, battle rap career, as per se. I mean, you know, when he first kind of, you know, started out on Don't Flop and stuff, he was kind of known as the, you know, like uh, funny tongue in cheek, you know, kind of street kind of just that kind of persona, you know, where it's just kind of like, yeah, like I'm a, I'm a rude boy and I'll just crack a few jokes here and there. But, you know, I think his, his writing definitely improved, you know, in the first couple of years he was in don't flop. And, you know, I think that's why maybe the staff were giving him you know, a higher caliber opponents. And, and you can see the writing was genuinely improving and he was kind of, a little bit more intricate. There was a lot. Um, I think sometimes he, his collaborations with like Lefty are a lot mm-hmm. more memorable, if that makes sense. Sure. Like the, the two on twos and stuff like that. I kind of feel like he gels better with, with, uh, with Lefty. And sometimes when he does a solo battle, he kind of, it's kind of like a, a car on, on a full tank and then just, you know, or a, a phone on a full battery and it just goes from a hundred to, you know, like 10% real quick. So he kind of like wanders through each of the rounds. Uh, and sometimes it's hard to keep interest. I think like a good example is like the Juan battle, like, um, yeah. uh, where, you know, obviously cause he hadn't been in don't flop for a long time. There was a whole kind of anticipation for him to, you know, like to return to, you know, the card and whatnot. And, um, he had a couple of good lines, you know, like the, the grease line I thought was really funny, you know, like, pointing at you, all you guys, and, you know, kind of taking jabs that don't flop. But then he kind of just ran out of steam towards the end of it. And yeah. I don't know, I feel sometimes that's what happens in a lot of his battles, or, you know, where, you know, he kind of starts off well, and then, you know, towards the end, it kind of, it's a bit of a kind of like a downward kind of slope. I mm. don't know if that kind of mm. makes sense. But. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah, no, completely. And this is a interesting clash, definitely a big style clash here. Templar mm. Surfer, who, you know, it seems like Don't Flop have closed their doors for him, which is a bit of a shame, but I guess I understand that because the whole Dank Schrader thing. Uh, I don't know the whole issues why he no-showed. It's a great shame. You know, we all just lost out there. I am a huge fan of Templar Surfer. I remember the first I heard of this guy was when I had Shocks on the podcast, uh, which was the episode first episode, and he was saying, oh, I saw this guy battle. I think he battled iKid was his first battle on Gift of the Gab, and I was like, I wanted to give him a chance. Mm. So they did this one-rounder, and I was so excited for, like, you know, to see Templar Surfer kid. Now, you know, wasn't disappointed. The guy really, really brings it. Tally battle as well is really good soul jitsu battle um you know uh, the tony battle of course you know he has that electric wordplay a lot of imagination there i just don't know if that works against big j i think this is like the bowski conundrum yet again like i think templar's uh, templar style as tony showed in his first round on gift of the gap is very easy to mock it's very easy to make fun of and make him look silly and i think big j could do that it's not to say that templar's not gonna have some terrific stuff here but i don't know if that kind of lyrical really intense wordplay breaking each syllable down kind of thing I don't think that's going to kick off really on on this stage. I think Big J could win this quite easily. Yeah, I think Big J, you know, definitely will kind of cater towards the KOTR kind of taste, you know, in terms of, you know, just jokes and and kind of just like mocking the whole kind of, you know, street kind of style and, you know, saying something along the lines of like your mum looks like Bob Marley or, <laughs> you know, yeah. some like silly kind of like one-liners like that are going to be more effective in a room full of people who, you know, are quite inebriated and just want to hear just some just some like really like funny kind of like you know wordplay and, and punchlines as opposed to you know like schemes and and you know like breaking down you know like opponents uh, an opponent's career or like um you know like their name or something like that so yeah i, I it'll be an interesting clash like uh, i'm i'm quite intrigued to see how that will go down mm-hmm. yeah and it's great to see templar um debuting on kotr as well you know no doubt the guy's a massive massive talent great character mm-hmm. this, this will be this will be an interesting one and um we get to the top battle which is you know a battle that could have headline sunburn four or you know what i mean this is like you know this is a really really good battle um again i don't know why i'm bringing this up but yeah again two people that i've had on the show uh great episodes check out the most problem harry baker episodes most problem versus harry baker like this is a this is a top tier battle jesus 
Yeah, yeah, they're they're veterans in the game, man. Mm. You know, they've been around for for a significant amount of years. Um, obviously, both coming from kind of like a poetry background, so uh, it's going to be quite quite you know a lot of wit, a lot of humour. Um, yeah, a lot of lot of comical angles as well. So yeah, I'm definitely looking forward to this, and I think. Um, yeah, it's, it's, it doesn't feel like it's going to be like a, you know, like a cutthroat kind of battle. It's just going to be all kind of like, you know, all kind of just for good, good fun, good humor. Uh, I think it will elevate as well the um, KOTR, as a, KOTR as a whole, because um, obviously they've, they've kind of made their names in other kind of lanes as well. Because I know, I think most probably done like Edinburgh Fringe a couple of times. And then I think. Harry Baker's done, you know, does all the poetry kind of yeah, slams. Yeah, he's, he's done the Fringe yeah. multiple times as well, yeah. Oh, and and, and he's done the Fringe as well. Mm-hmm. So it'll, it'll bring in a new audience um, for KOTR and it'll kind of, you know, make it less niche, I guess, because I always kind of feel like KOTR, in comparison to Don't Flop, obviously Battle Rap as a whole is quite niche, yeah. but I feel that uh, like with KOTR, it's kind of like putting a box on top of a box <laughs> in terms of like their audience and who they kind of, you know, appeal to. Yeah. So, yeah, 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 I think this is, I mean, both of these guys are, you know, wordsmiths. That's kind of how they predicate it. So it's Harry to more explicit extent, but most prob is, you know, gifted, gifted writer. Like most prob versus soul is one of the greatest stone flop battles ever, in my opinion. Like, you know, both of those guys bring it for three straight rounds. Harry Baker, his poetry is, is absolutely exceptional. You know, he's doing some, some music now from what I gather. And, um, you know, just his battling, you know, he's, he's raised his stock up. He's not just the kind of spoken word guy that battles. He's like, you know, it's guy's battled like O'Shea and Matter and like you know all these kind of big names he's gonna battle Carter Deems unfortunately that fell through and this is just a, a wonderful battle I just I just part of me kind of like I love the rambunctious debauchery of KOTR but for this one I want the crowd to be really respectful and just let this complex wordplay happen like you know what I mean I don't want anyone to throw a glass at Harry Baker or something as he's like <laughs> as he's like doing some like scheme about problems or so I, I don't know what I, it, I know that's not gonna happen but yeah please Please, please respect the MCs, as they say. But um, yeah, most probably it's Harry Baker. I can't even really predict a winner there. I, no, I can't. I was going to say most prob then, but then something in my soul tugged me back. So no, I can't. I think they're both gonna they're both gonna kill it. And this is um, I mean, going through this card, it's a great card. You know, six battles. It doesn't overstay its welcome. But all of them have a lot of promise. So some of them have more than a lot of promise. Some of them are destined maybe to be classics. Yeah, most definitely. I, I think the the title match is is definitely going to raise yeah. the stock of KOTR, um, and then also the uh, the Big J and Templar Surfer mm-hmm. match is is going to be a good look. And I, you know, I, I want to see more KOTR and, and Gift of the Gab collaborations because I feel that event which they did uh, last year was phenomenal and. Uh, it was actually like, cause I was thinking about it as well. It was free entry to get in, but I would have happily paid, mm. you know, like 10 pounds to have watched all the performances that day. And, um, and I think it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a testament to, to, to KOTR and, and the hard work they're starting to put in now. And I see good things for them in 2017, yeah. to be honest, yeah. you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I mean like, you know, they were to a certain extent, the kind of laugh league, you know what I mean? The mm. kind of bottom tier, whatever to a certain, you know, I myself, you know, a few years ago was sort of dismissive of them clinging to my don't flop badge with pride but you can't deny that they're a great league they've got great battles they have awesome talent like you know if you're if you're not watching KOTR then you're just shooting yourself in the foot as a battle fan really there's so much good material on there and they're um you know they're plowing a new furrow as well so and you're you're gonna be there is that right Shay you're gonna you're gonna be present yeah I'm gonna be in attendance um I always like to view kind of like battle rap events as a great way to network as well so um yeah I'll go down there um bought a camera recently so maybe just do a couple of like interviews just do some stuff to to put on um me and my friend's youtube channel as well and then maybe do a little write-up for raft magazine as well um so yeah like um i'll be there and you know if you want to have a chat then yeah feel free to approach me man <laughs> yeah 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 and uh it'd be good to get you back on actually just to give a little recap as well here it all went down yeah yeah i love to man yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. Most definitely. all right well uh, i guess to wrap up how do people uh, follow you i mean you, your writings on raf magazine twitter that sort of stuff yeah so um all my articles are on uh the raf magazine website which mm-hmm. is 
actually going to call it the line arc because <laughs> it's too you know what it is because it's RAF but then right. oh, when course, you type yeah. in RAF you get Royal Air Forces <laughs> so, <laughs> so I just need to just confirm the uh, website RAF Magazine okay so it's rafmagazine.co.uk right and uh, for all the articles I've done, uh, it's under Shea Creo. Mm -hmm. So, um, yeah, I do everything from like concerts to music reviews to, um, oh, I've started now to kind of get into the whole realm of like battle rap uh, critiquing and, and reviews as well. So, um, yeah, like feel free to have a read through the articles. Let me know what you think. Mm -hmm. um, also, I'm on Twitter. So uh, twitter.com forward slash Shea Creo. Uh, Instagram, Instagram and SoundCloud, pretty much the same as well. So yeah, feel free to get in contact with me. I'm always up to collaborate, you know, put ideas on the table. And, you know, if you want to have a chat about potentially me reviewing something for you, like a mixtape or a CD, then I'm happy to listen to it, man. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Well, yeah, thank you so much, man. This has been uh, it's been great going through, and I should infuse everyone as well. If you listened to this before, it's going to take place on uh, you know on the Sunday, so that's going to be Sunday the twenty second, going down there, and just going to be a you know phenomenal, phenomenal card. So get down, New Cross Inn. But um, Shay, thanks so much, bro. Yeah, sure, anytime, Tom. 